Um, first of all, it's a really good win for us. Any any postseason wins is, is good. Um, I thought um, Coach Pizdelic had his team ready. I thought C.J. Harris was really ready to play. Uh, we didn't know if we were coming and going really on defense in the first half. They they executed well. They had some new plays uh, and did a great job. Um, got after our guys a little bit at halftime. <clears throat> Talked about energy. We came out with energy. Um, start the second half, got our offense going. We weren't quite as good defensively uh, until the end. Um, so and we did something tonight we don't do a lot. We got to the foul line and uh, we made free throws. That was the difference, but really proud of my guys. We had to play some funny lineups, do some things, and, and the guys responded. And good win for us. Okay, questions, raise your hand. Let us know who you are, who you're with, and please address a question to a specific player. First question to our left. Damien sort of let Lynchburg news in advance. Uh, Des, this is for you. Talk about the defense on C.J. Harris in the second half. You hold him without a field goal, and I think only you know, six points. How key was that to kind of take him out of Wake's offense and really allow you guys to build some momentum, you know, on the defensive end to translate to the offense? Uh, well, P. Sharon did a great job on him. Uh, you know, C.J. <clears throat> can score in bunches. You know, so we just uh, dug down on him when he uh, – Tried to dive, you know, took his lanes away from him, and um, just tried to make him, you know, make good passes to his teammates and let them beat us, you know. So he's a great player, and I'm pretty sure he'll play somewhere after college. So you know, we just did a good job as team defense on him in the second half. Front row, Peshawn Patrick Stevens. Just uh, that second half is probably as loose as I think a lot of folks have seen you play over the last couple couple months or so. I mean, is this almost like a fresh start for you, th this tournament? And, and was that as good as you'd felt over the last couple months? Uh, definitely. I felt pretty pretty loose. Um, that was one thing that the coaches reiterated at halftime is just go out here, have fun, and, and be loose. Um, it's a new season. And just take it one possession at a time and, and concentrate on that and just have fun and, and be together. And, you know, we have fun together on the court. David Glenn from accsports.com and the David Glenn Show. Des, when you first made a college decision, there was a chance you'd never play in an ACC tournament. Now, not only did you play in one, it's in your home state, your team won, and you're the star player. Is it an exaggeration to say that this is a dream come true? Well, we have a lot of great players on our team, so I wouldn't say I'm a star player. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, I grew up, you know, uh, watching guys like Jason Williams, Mike Dunleavy, Juan Dixon, and Steve Blake play. So, <coughs> It's always a good, a good, a great, a great feeling to be back home, or close to home, and playing in the greatest, the greatest conference in college basketball. So um, I'm just excited to be here, and excited to play and compete. Front row. This is for Coach Turgeon, um, and I'm Ben Doster with Deacon's Illustrated and Rivals.com. Uh, Y'all held Wake uh, without a field goal for about eight and a half minutes in the second half. Uh, we talk about the success that y'all had defensively there and what y'all did. Well, I think it was a combination. I think we were pretty good, and they had a lot of shots go all the way in and out. I mean, if you know, if you're a Wake fan, you you you, you saw a lot of them bounce out for us. And then we limited them to one shot. And about the eight-minute timeout, I just said, guys, we got to make them shoot jump shots. They're getting to the rim. Uh, I think uh, that was when Mackay drove Dev's baseline, and we just it's just it's, they have to shoot jump shots to beat us. And so we 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 played a little bit smarter that way, and they did shoot a lot of jump shots. They got some open ones, um, but they didn't fall for them, and. Um, you know, but we, we, we were pretty locked in. We, our scouting report was pretty good in the second half. Our guys were locked in. Uh, did a much better job on Harris. You know, uh, first half, they, they got a ball screen we didn't show. He hits a three, and then they ran a double screen for him, and we didn't show. Uh, so we got six points right there. So, um, but after that, we were pretty locked in. Back left. Hey, Des, this is Dane Huffman, WNCN in Raleigh. Hey, back here in the corner. Um, last time you played Duke, you know, it, Ryan Kelly didn't play. I don't think he played in the first game against y'all either. How does that change that game tomorrow to have him on the floor as far as what y'all have to do? Oh, well, Ryan changes the whole dynamic of that team. You know, so we're going to come ready and we're going to have a scout report ready for him and, and for the rest of the Duke players, you know, so um, – He's a great player. Coach K is a great coach, you know, but we, I believe in my team, our defense, and my coaches. Front row. Yeah, for uh, P. Sean, I wanted to ask you also about Duke. What are your thoughts? You got such a, a quick turnaround, not a lot of time to, to think about it. What are your thoughts about playing them for the third time this year? 
It's going to be a grind. Um, you know, they're a great team and great program, but I trust in our coaches to have us prepared. Uh, you know, they know every team in and out in this conference. We've played every team about twice. So we're just going to have to come out and play, and it's going to be in between the lines, and we're going to have to really lock in and just grind it out. <clears throat> to our left. Evan Markfield, Associated Press. Des, for you, um, how much of a motivation was it knowing you guys need probably, you know, a couple of wins here to, to try to get into the NCAA tournament? Oh, regardless of whether we were a lock for the tournament or not, you know, we were come out and compete every night. You know, we play to win every game. So, you know, whether we were a lock in or whether we, you know, were had no chance of being in a NCAA tournament, we were come out here and we were going to play our hardest and play our hearts out for, for each other and for our coaches, you know, because that's, at the end of the day, that's all we have. <clears throat> Any other questions? I like it. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, extremely proud of my basketball team and their effort. Uh, it was 54-54, I believe, with uh, nine minutes and uh, whatever and seconds left. And um, what we did in the uh, first half to have a lead, we didn't do in the second half. Second half, we turned the ball over, uh, I believe, nine times, and they were bad turnovers unlike the first half where we only turned the ball over five times and we were more efficient offensively in the first half, giving ourselves a chance. Uh, we also coupled that with missing some free throws and uh, the game got away from us there. Um, questions? Can you raise your hand again, let us know who you are, who you're with, and the first question in the front row. Ben Doster with Deacons Illustrated and Rivals.com. Coach, uh, curious, uh, just to get your thoughts on uh, what Maryland did in the second half defensively, especially in that eight and a half minute drought without a field goal. Well, they were up and into us. We knew they would be. Uh, I thought we were just a little careless and uh, uh, just not real sharp offensively. Um, nothing special. Some of those turnovers were self-inflicted, just being careless with the ball, being loose with the ball, not running through passes and um, I thought uh, um, we tried to force a little bit too much on the break. We had we got stops defensively, and then we turned it over unnecessarily on the break, not making good decisions, trying to uh, just force the action too much instead of just pulling it out, playing off two feet, making sure passes, and and uh, we wasted some some valuable possessions there uh, when we had opportunity on the break and before their defense was set up. Front row. Jonathan Jones, Charlotte Observer. Jeff, uh, C.J. Harris, your lone scholarship senior, he leaves without having a uh, an ACC tournament victory. How disappointing is it to, to have a guy who's, who's been here so long and, and was not able to come away with a, an ACC tournament win? Well, we're disappointed for him. I, he's a terrific young man. He uh, uh, re has really just uh, uh, just been a, a great role model for our young players. He represents Wake Forest the way we want it to be re represented. Um, 
And we're disappointed for him. We are. To our left. Damian Sorrell at Lynchburg News in advance. Devin, how much did Maryland's defense and taking away CJ kind of disrupt the flow of the offense in the second half? Uh, he didn't hit a field goal, and how much did that disrupt what you guys wanted to do on the offensive end and allowed Maryland to transition that from their defense to offense? Um, I think that we got CJ the ball when we wanted him to get the ball. Um, like Coach said, we were just careless with our passes in the fast break. And when we turn the ball over nine times, and they all lead to fast break, most of them lead to fast break points. Um, with missed free throws, uh, you can't really win the game. Dan Collins, Winston Salem Journal. David, can you talk to the disappointment of your first ACC tournament? Um, it's a big disappointment, um, especially the circumstances. Um, it's sad for not only us, but the Wake Forest community uh, for CJ not to uh, get a, a win in tournament play and uh, for us freshmen that were experiencing it for the first time, but um, we just need to stay humble and stay hungry in the off season. Middle of the rim. David Glenn from ACCSports.com and the David Glenn Show. Coach, as the game wound down, there were two Wake fans behind you, one screaming at you and the other defending you. What is your message right now to a frustrated fan base? That this foundation that we've built is rock solid with terrific young men and terrific young players, and that there is a very bright future. You know, we, uh, we have beaten four out of the top six teams in this league. We've lost in numerous close games. As these young men grow up, get bigger and stronger, um, they're going to turn those close wins into close losses into great wins. They really are. Um, we played well for a good portion of today, but the game got away from us, especially in those final nine minutes. Uh, it's a learning experience. Uh, there's a great majority of the fans that we hear from that are very, very supportive. It's been reflected in the attendance at our home games, and they're behind these young men. And uh, these young men are committed to Wake Forest. And they're committed to working hard, and there is a very bright future the right way. Another one for Devin. Uh, you actually, the game was, I think you were, it was a one-point game or so when Alex Lynn went out with his fourth foul, and that's when they took control of the game. What happened in there with Lynn on the bench? Um, like I said before, they got a fast break points um, off a of, off of rebound, free throw. Shot, rebound, outlet pass. Um, we just didn't, we did a great job stopping Deswell in transition in the first half. Um, I think all his points, most of his points, uh, were off jump shots, and you know, we would live with that because he really isn't a good jump shooter, except for today. Um, but normally he doesn't. He likes going to the rack, and we weren't going to allow him to get go 11 for 12 from the rack again, and. I think we did a great job on the rebound today. I think we lost by four, but they didn't really get a lot of offensive rebounds. So what it comes down to is missed free throws and turnovers in the second half because we were controlling the game in the first half. Front left. Ed Lane with ESPN Southside. Uh, Coach and, and Devin, this can be for both of you guys. You mentioned you talked a lot careless turnovers, nine of them in the second half. What can realistically – what can you guys realistically do in game when they're starting to mount to try and put a stop to that and prevent them from continuing and having a snowball effect? It's got to be really strong with the basketball. We were in the first half. We've been at times throughout the course of this year. Uh, it's just uh, it, so much of this game is from the neck up, uh, making sure passes. There were many times on the break that we just simply uh, left our feet and uh, tried to make a circus pass instead of a solid pass. Um, you just have to be rock solid in, in your fundamentals of catching and passing, playing off two feet, just hitting, hitting guys, throwing the ball to someone who's wearing a Wake Forest jersey. It's that simple. And it might sound corny to you, but, you know, it, it's interesting. It's... 
in a conversation with Coach Bob Knight one time, he just said, I tell my team, just throw it to a guy who's wearing the same jersey you are. It's that simple. And, and we are too careless, uh, leaving our feet, trying to make circus plays. Coach, obviously there was a prominent paid ad put on the cover of the sports page of Greensboro News and Record. I was curious if you saw it and what your reaction was it uh, to was it and if, if the comments you made earlier about reaffirming the foundation still hold true when you saw it. First of all, I don't read the newspaper. I don't read the Internet. And that's the honest goodness truth. And I don't even watch sports on TV except for games that I need to watch. So I've never seen anything, have no clue about what's being said. I don't worry about things I don't have any control over. I just do my job. And what I know is this, we have built uh, a really strong foundation w without compromising any values or integrity at Wake Forest University, and there is a very bright future. Jeff, would you discuss your reasons for starting Cody after mentioning you were going to start Madison? Just that, uh, you know, Cody, Cody had started all the previous games, and the only reason that he didn't to the North, uh, at, at North Carolina State was that he had strep throat and couldn't even make the trip. And then um, the Virginia Tech game, he, you know, hadn't practiced much. And I started Madison. They both played extremely well. Again, uh, we have such a great group of young guys that uh, they understood. And I'm not going to have a young man lose his starting position just because he got sick. Uh, it's about playing well when you're in there. They've all bought into that. Any other questions? Take one more front row. Coach and Devin, uh, we've seen this team play very well. It's at times during the season, beat number two in the country, beat NC State in a, in a big game. And then we've seen this team play some games that, that where they didn't perform so well. And so when you get down to the stats, it's like splitting hairs in this conference. So what can this team do between now and next year to figure out how to close out games and get those victories that you were so close to getting throughout the season and grow into the team with the foundation that you say you've built? Devin? Um, like Coach said, um, just from the neck up, it's just a mindset. Half of it's from your mind. And, you know, when we're at home, uh, we have a different mindset, but when we're on the road. Um, you know, we have a different mindset. Um, I think next year <clears throat> we'll be more comfortable uh, getting to play everywhere, um, getting to experience every uh, gym in the ACC, and um, understanding coaches' offense a lot better. And um, we'll be a lot we'll be a lot better understanding the game more, and it will slow down for us. <laughs> um, just to echo what Devin said. Uh, um, Yes, we've been inconsistent, no doubt about it. Um, we need to get stronger uh, physically. We need to, as Devin said so well, um, the game will slow down for them. And understanding defensive positioning, understanding how to defend uh, uh, offensive situations better, the importance of blocking off on every play, the importance of being ball strong. Uh, we need to uh, get in the gym and really get up lots and lots of shots to be a better shooting team, be a better passing team. And we're going to get to work on that. We'll have a meeting on Monday and plan the spring and summer and fall, and we're going to go to work. And know that next October is about seven months away. But they'll be bigger, they'll be stronger, they'll be wiser, they'll be grittier, they'll be tougher, and they'll be more together. And uh, that's the process you have when you have a young basketball team like we have. Thank you. Thank you. The 78 championship team, later the 84 final four team, which, uh, by the way, included uh, Melvin Turpin.